Um, welcome everyone this afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining in um, on this lovely sunny day. Um, so for those who have not met before, um, my name is Kate Galbally. I'm based out in Mulgai and I'm a professional organiser and productivity coach. Um, I've been running Better Organised for just over three years now. Um, and basically what I do is I help busy decision makers to declutter their space and manage their time. Um, I'm a very proud member of the Association of Professional Declutterers and Organisers. Uh, there's around 400 of us now in the UK and um, I'm just um, passionate about helping people to uh, be better organised in their homes and businesses. And I've worked from home um, myself now um, for, as I say, just about three years. Um, so really wanted to, to come along today to try and just give you some practical tips and things that you can hopefully take away with you that will um, help you when you're um, trying to get accustomed to working from home. Um, as Damon said, if you've got any questions throughout, you can use the, the chat function. Um, I'll also um, open up the floor, so to speak, for questions at a couple of points, and then hopefully we'll, we'll have a wee bit of time at the end as well. So we're aiming to finish um, no later than half past three. Um, so what we're going to cover today is, just bear with me. You will see me looking to the side because I have a second screen. So um, if you can just bear with me if I'm doing that. So what we're covering is the challenges and benefits of working from home. Uh, we'll have a wee discussion about work, uh, your workspace and routines, managing distractions, interruptions and procrastination, tools and resources. And as I've mentioned, we'll have uh, opportunities for Q&A. Um, but really what I want to do is cover um, practical steps for setting yourself up for success to improve your productivity and motivation when you're uh, working at home um, and really highlight useful tools and resources that you might want to explore in a wee bit more depth yourself to see what would be helpful for you um, and ultimately suggest positive actions that you can then take and that you can apply right away to give you better productivity during these uncertain times. Um, so firstly, can I just ask you to raise your hand if this, if working from home is absolutely new to you, if, you, if you've never done it before? Is there anyone here who is doing it for the first time? Or you've all got a wee bit of experience of it? Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, well, some of the challenges, and I'm sure that you'll have perhaps encountered some or all of these yourselves. Um, some of the challenges from uh, when working from home can be the, the physical challenges. Um, so, for example, it's not a typical office environment. It's not set up as an office. Um, so it's maybe not an ideal environment for work purposes because that's not what it's been set up to do. Um, in terms of digital and tools, you maybe at home don't have all the equipment that you would be accustomed to having in an office environment, um, you know, whether that's uh, digital equipment, ele electronic equipment, um, or anything as simple as stationary supplies. You, you just maybe don't have everything to hand that you would normally have. Um, one of the, well, some of the very common ones that I hear from uh, business owners are distractions and interruptions, uh, particularly in the current circumstances where you're quite possibly dealing uh, with working from home, but you've also maybe got a partner or children in the, in the home as well. Um, and it can be quite distracting, either your know, family members or even just things around the house, you know, domestic chores, etc., can be quite distracting. Um, and there, there can also be interruptions there as well. Um, some other common ones are uh, procrastination, focus and motivation. Um, without having a set timetable um, and without having the nine to five structure of working in an office, um, you're perhaps not having the same regular meetings that you would have. Um, you don't have colleagues working alongside you. You don't have your boss with you, perhaps. And all these things can mean it can be quite difficult to actually get sort of in the zone 
when it comes to work. Um, it can also impact on relationships. Um, so that's your working relationships and personal, um, perhaps with colleagues, your partner and your children. Um, obviously, everyone is just trying to adjust to a new setup. And there can also be an emotional toll um, as well, because while we're all st still trying to manage our work commitments, we're also now trying to comprehend what's going on in the world. And, um, and also some of us might also be trying to home educate as well as entertain young children as well. So there's quite a balancing act there. Uh, and lastly, one of uh, the other common ones that I hear is when it comes to working at home, it can be a lot more difficult to determine where the boundaries are. Um, the boundaries can become very blurred because you can feel that you're literally, you're always at home and you're always at work. Um, and you can be pulled in, in both directions. Um, I've, I've recently heard of the, the phrase work creep. Um, and that's where you're just finding yourself constantly pulled into, into your work um, and find it very difficult to switch between work mode and, and home mode. Um, and obviously without the physical transition from office to, work, uh, office to home, that boundary uh, is, is a lot more blurred. So on the flip side, there can actually be some really good benefits to working from home. Um, can I just ask, have, have any of you experienced any perhaps unexpected benefits since you've been working from home more over the last few weeks? Anyone? No? Okie dokie. I can I can say a wee bit sure. if, if you like, Kate. Uh, yeah. So, um, and actually, in, interestingly, I can I can speak on behalf of other people because we do our daily drop-in sessions. So there's been quite a few, um, and it's quite quite useful to share. So I mean, there's there's personal uh, and professional sort of uh, benefits. I would say so. Um, the the themes that have come through are on a, a sort of personal level. Some people are uh, using or not using time, but find themselves um, spending more time on their health and well-being. And, you know, they're making sure they're going out for you know walks, the uh, exercise, looking at new ways to uh, keep fit, um, and using you know that 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 time that they do have uh, that maybe isn't used up with a commute um uh for for their own health and well-being so that was that's one really big one that's that's coming through um and some people are actually connecting more because there may be you know sole traders who are actually probably some of the more likely to work at home but they sometimes are more isolated in the first place so, so it's actually opening up opportunities there as well um and i, I think F philip actually you're if i could ask philip to come in and just mention the remote, uh, you know, the, the 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 kind of virtual tour that you did. I think that was a, a benefit as well. Yeah, I'm probably uh, one of the few that are still actually in the office and working from the office. But a lot of our customers, um, well, we aren't accepting visitors to the factory, so we did a remote uh, or a virtual tour uh, on Skype for a customer who wanted to see down the factory a couple of weeks ago. And it's turned out really well, so we we'll probably do that again, even when this is all passed over. We'll, We'll do that something we can offer customers. That sounds like a brilliant idea. It worked really well. It's, uh, yeah. And now I, I'm getting better at Zoom that uh, we could probably do it on Zoom as well, but uh, it was really good. Great. <laughs> oh, someone got something to add here? Yes. Um, yeah, number 09386. <laughs> I'm actually David Atkinson from CO2 Design. Hi, David. Uh, hi. Uh, one benefit that we, we've found is um, there's eight people that operate from the office. And because we've set up a VPN really quite easily and we can access our files, what I've found, strangely enough, communication is almost better. We, we have a 10 o'clock meeting every morning between eight mm -hmm. of us. So everybody's aware of what's happening straight away. And then people seem to enjoy the, the work. It's not a nine to five. I need to work a bit later. I can do what, whatever they want. And they seem to be, rather than just stuck in an office, which you might get out half an hour for lunch, you can work at your own pace. And we found that quite useful. The major benefit for me will be, I think it will change for the future, is 
is people might not be work nine to five Monday to Friday. You know, they might come into work for two days and then work at home for three days where they get more done. There's less distractions. If, as Damon mentioned earlier, you've not got kids and everything else and dogs <laughs> and all that type of thing. But yeah. I think there will be a mixture when we go forward and I think it will change working as far as we go on. Yep. Definitely. No, I, I would definitely agree. I think, I think there will be positives to come out of this um, in terms of, uh, you know, the way that people work. And, and I think employers might be um, who were perhaps previously hesitant to have people working from home, I think will probably be more, much more receptive and open to it now because they've seen, you know, they've been forced into a position where they've had to do it, but they've actually seen that it, it can actually really work. Great. Okay. Thank you. Has anyone else got anything to add before we move on? No? Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so we've touched on quite a few of the benefits there, um, including one or two that I hadn't actually um, included. Um, so the first one, uh, as David mentioned there, is the, the flexibility. Um, so when you're working from home, you, you do have a lot more flexibility to actually create a structure and a schedule that, that works for you personally. Um, now, obviously, a lot of this will depend on, um, you know, on, on what your job is and, and the format that that takes. But there is the potential to perhaps you know, create a much more uh, tailored structure um, that actually suits you rather than have that uh, imposed on you, if you like. Um, depending on your, your environment at home and your living arrangements, um, you can potentially actually have fewer interruptions if you're working at home. Um, you might also have fewer meetings to attend. Um, and uh, obviously Zoom is absolutely fantastic. It's been an absolute lifeline, I think, for people over the last few weeks. Uh, and it's, you know, it's opened up the possibility to network and communicate with people in a different way. Um, but there's few, you know, fewer sort of physical meetings, obviously, to, to attend because that's not a, not a possibility for most of us at the moment. Um, there can also be uh, cost savings to working at home. It can be very cost effective. Um, you might find it easier to, to focus when you're in a home environment because, you, as I say, you maybe don't have the same distractions that you would at work. Um, you don't have the stressful commute. And ultimately, it can actually um, give you a, a better work-life balance. So as Damon mentioned, you know, people are perhaps, with this opportunity, they are actually perhaps finding that they're, they're able to spend a wee bit more time and attention on their well-being, their health, um, you know, the daily exercise. Um, what I would say is, Overall, the key to, for me is um, the key to working effectively and productively at home is to balance structure with flexibility. Um, and we'll come on to looking at that in a wee bit more depth throughout the, throughout the session this afternoon. But there's a wee quote here that I just wanted to show you because I thought this really sums up uh, some of the benefits of having an organised approach. And this is in terms of your workspace, your routines, etc. Um, so it's not about uh, perfection. Um, it's efficiency, reducing stress and clutter, saving time and money and improving your quality of life. And I think working from home can really um, give us an opportunity to, to do that. Um, for me, having an organised approach, um, it just gives a clarity to, to us in terms of what needs to be done, when it needs to be done and who it needs to be done by. Um, it's about being able to quickly find what you need, whether that's physical items or, or digital. And it can also give you the ability to prioritise and, and focus on what's important. So whether that's uh, generating income and growing your business, or whether it's family time, um, personal development, professional development. But just being able to, to focus and give your appropriate attention to the people and the activities that are most important to you, whether that's a, in a work setting or um, at home. So in terms of setting the scene for success, um, there's two areas that I'm going to look at here. So the first one is in terms of your, your physical workspace at home. 
So some of the practical considerations that I would recommend are that you set up a dedicated area to work from. Um, now you might not have um, a home office, but ideally try to identify um, a space that you can set up a, 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 even a hot desk, if you like, in your own home. So whether that's your kitchen table, dining table, um, a breakfast bar, but basically somewhere that you can have comfortable seating, space to lay out the equipment and the materials that you're going to use. Um, ideally have some natural light if you can. Um, but equally, I would also really take a minute or two to decide where you're definitely not going to work so that you do keep some boundaries, physical boundaries between where you work and where you don't within the, the home. Um, so the obvious examples there for me would be, um, I don't work on the sofa, uh, I don't work in beds, um, particularly with smartphones and laptops, it can be very, very easy to fall into a trap of just working anywhere, anywhere in the home. Um, and that can make it very difficult to, to establish boundaries. Um, so as well as identifying where you will work, remember to, to just identify areas that are not for working in, um, just to keep that separation. Thirdly, one thing I would recommend that you think about is in terms of setting the scene for success, I would say replicate success. And what I mean by that is if you're used to working in an office environment, consider the occasions and the settings that would, would naturally generally give you your sort of optimum periods of productivity, if you like. So what settings or circumstances have you, in which settings have you felt and worked at your most productively? So for example, is there a particular time of day where you know that that's, that is your most um, productive and efficient period? Um, is there perhaps a, a, a drink or a snack that is associated with that? So for a lot of people, they'll say, you know, I'll have my first cup of coffee and then the hour and a half after that first cup of coffee of the day, that's always my most productive period of the day. Um, there might be um, noises that are, are associated that you associate with being productive. Um, so whether you work in a very very quiet environment and you find that that works for you, or perhaps you like having background noise or background music, or it might be that you're working with a particular person. Um, so perhaps when you buddy up with a particular colleague, the two of you just work really really effectively together, and that's something that you find really. Um, positive and that works well. So where possible, as much as you can, if you can replicate those circumstances, um, even in a virtual environment at home, then you're really setting yourself up for success. So for example, that might be that, you know, you have your morning routine, you have your shower, you know, your breakfast, your shower, you get dressed, you have your first cup of coffee, and then you use that time straight after that to do your most um, difficult and chunky bits of work if you like. Um, if it's a particular person that you work really well with, maybe make a point of checking in with them at the start and end of the day or even just work virtually, just do a wee virtual session on Zoom where you're working in tandem um, and bouncing ideas off each other uh, and again just replicating that setting which would normally take place in an office but just replicating that in a slightly different format. Is that making sense so far? Okay. Um, so again, when you're working from home, one of the, the temptations, and I have um, been guilty of this myself in the past, but there is a temptation to literally just sit at your desk and not move away from your desk at all. Um, and that can, it can be easy to fall into that trap because if you're in an office environment, there are things that will physically require you to leave your desk. Um, so whether that's you have to go to a meeting room or you have to go to the canteen or a colleague maybe says to you, you know, I'm going, uh, going somewhere else in the building, do you want to come with me? But there are physical things that will actually take you away from your desk. When you're at home, that's not always the case. Um, so what I would always say is try to remind yourself to take regular breaks away from your desk. Um, and there might be ways that you can actually still be in 
work mode, if you like, but not physically stuck to your desk to do it. Um, so some examples might be um, that you might be able to catch up with a colleague over the phone when you're going out for a walk. Um, you might want to get out into your garden for a wee bit just to get a change of scene and get some fresh air. And during that time, again, you could be on a phone call um, or you could even be tuning into a webinar or a podcast or an audio book, um, you know, all of which can be work related, um, but just gets you away from the, the, you know, being stuck at your desk all day. And then lastly, I would always recommend in the same way that if you were working in an office and you maybe have a clear desk policy um, and you would sort of pack up your desk at the end of the day, um, when you're at home, again, I would just suggest that you do clear your desk at the end of the day. And again, that is about making a, a it physically marks the transition between your, your, your work day coming to an end and then being at, ho at home. Um, and I really think that's important. So whether it's just that you close your laptop or that you physically pack up um, your laptop, etc., cetera, um, and take them off the kitchen worktop or dining table and pack it away. Um, but again, it's just about creating that definition between the work day coming to an end and then um, enjoying the rest of the, the evening. So if we move on to um, routines, Again, setting the scene for success. Um, I'll just run through some of my suggestions um, and recommendations. So with routines, um, I think with the current circumstances that we have, we do have an opportunity um, to really explore alternative ways of communicating, collaborating and learning. Um, we can actually take this time to step back from the nine to five and experiment a wee bit with a different format and a different timetable, if you think that that would be beneficial for you. Um, it's an opportunity to maybe just try a more flexible approach to your work. Uh, so for example, what you might want to do is stretch your, your working day over um, a sort of slightly longer period, but break it up into chunks with, with gaps in between. Um, and perhaps longer gaps than you would have if you were in an office. Um, you might want to experiment, for example, with early starts. You might want to um, perhaps work for a wee bit in the evenings. It just really depends what you think would, would, would sit well with you, what would work for you. Um, I would also add, even if you're doing that, I would also make the point that you do define your absolute parameters though. So as much as you might say, well, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start a wee bit earlier than nine o'clock. You might also want to say to yourself, but the earliest I'll do anything would be, you know, eight o'clock, for example. Um, and again, at the other end of the day, set yourself a limit. So as much as you might allow for a bit more flexibility throughout your working day, I would definitely recommend having your, your, your outer parameters at either end of the day that you, you won't work beyond a certain time. Um, secondly, I would say it's really important when you're working from home, and again, a lot of us are just getting used to this for the first time, or maybe just um, doing it a lot more than we, than we ever have before. Um, I think it's really important to manage expectations. And that means in terms of how many hours you're going to work, how many hours you can work, um, how much you can actually get done, and how long things will take. So I think in terms of managing expectations, it's really important that you manage other people's expectations. So that's you know, your boss, your colleagues, et cetera, and your staff, but also manage your own expectations as well. Um, you know, through talking to clients, et cetera, um, I think there's a perception that if you can work at home, then you can get so much more done than you ever would in the office. And that can be true depending on what your, your uh, working situation is. But being at home doesn't automatically um, turn you into a productivity powerhouse, if you like. Um, so again, it's just being very realistic with yourself and others about what can be expected. I think it's really important to plan ahead. Um, so this is something I would always recommend that you do. Just take that time at the end of your working day, whether you're home-based or back in an office environment, 
always take a few a few minutes at the end of your working day to plan ahead for the next day um, map out your day in terms of your calendar um, you, you've, you've probably already done that for the following day but just refine it make sure you've looked over it and you're familiar with what to expect for the the next day in terms of appointments and commitments also factor in time for breaks um, make sure that you are actually almost scheduling your breaks into your day to, to break up your day um, make sure you take your lunch break factor that in as well and give yourself opportunities throughout the day for fresh air and exercise and that can all really help your productivity because it helps to keep you fresh alert um, it keeps you fueled as long as you're having regular breaks drinks snacks meals etc um, and to work at your most effectively and productively it's really important that you are um, fed and watered and as I say getting away from your desk at regular opportunities um, and getting a wee bit of fresh air a wee bit of exercise um, and just to to really set yourself up for success in terms of your routine as well dressing the part now, does everyone um, does anyone sort of dress for work when they're working from home or do you dress differently i'd love to know a wee bit of feedback on this damon did you want to did you want to mention something um oh no i'm it's just something i've been trying to push uh quite a lot because um you know they're, they're, they're certainly early on in this process you know there's people sitting on uh, sofas in hoodies and stuff uh, and uh, i've very much uh made the point to, to people we've been speaking to these you, these people that you're speaking to haven't changed you know they're still the same clients that you're you're speaking to uh, and actually do you know what if they're sat in the hoodie they don't care if you, that you're the one that's uh, they're, they're buying from. So you should always make the effort, I think, to uh, present yourself accordingly um, to to your audiences. So I think that's it. And, and I think the secondly thing, second thing that came was again, if I can feedback from some of our other sessions, it forms part of your routine and all that sort of psychological thing about you you separating your working day. You know, and it's great. I still like, you know, just put a shirt and uh, stuff on and, and I quite like changing at the end of the day. And it feels like I've finished my day, you know, psychologically as well, sort of thing. Yep, definitely. I think that's, that's a brilliant point to make, actually. As you say, um, again, it's that physical transition. Um, if you've had um, your work, work clothes on during the day, uh, again, that's another physical thing that you can do to shift to make that physical shift between working and then the end of your working day. You know, if you can, you know, change your top or or, or whatever. Um, but as you say, psychologically, if you, if you're dressing the part, you it, it just gets you in the right frame of mind. I think for working at your most effective and productive. Okay, can I bring Robert in? He's got his hand up at this point. Yes, absolutely. Please. Are you okay. Yes, hi there. Hi, hi okay. Yeah, going back to what Damien said, I was, uh, Damien was, I'm also a member of the Federation of Master Builders, and we did a Zoom meeting over a week ago uh, and from the from whole UK, and one of the guys had a hoodie on and a collar and tie, and it just looked absolutely ridiculous. So I, I totally agree with the, the Damien there. It just looks rather stupid when you're doing that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very I've... much. Oh, you're welcome. Th no, thanks okay. very much for that. Uh, yeah, I've been on some recent Zoom chats where I've seen people you know, the, um, that people are zooming from their beds, um, <laughs> and and they stick. You know, and the, I think there was one Zoom chat I was on, and there was about forty people on it. But your eye is just drawn to the fact that someone's lying in their bed, <laughs> and you you can't help but keep looking at it. Um, so yeah, I think that's again that's another. Um, another advantage of setting your your own um definitions between what you will and won't class as a, a working area in your home if i can jump in as well for the guys i've sure. noticed a lot of unshaven types as well out there so uh, which is fine with the, some of them are just growing beards which you know is fine but again you know i get up shave every day that's part of my routine and uh you know i don't carry a beard <laughs> very well so uh, <laughs> I look like, what's his name out of Scooby-Doo? 
Uh, How are you speaking to? Does that mean Phil you're having a go at? No, 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 people who people who have beards and carry them fine. It's just if you know, I've seen people just having that sort of unshaven look, and and again, it's it's similar to the hoodie. You you, you kind of notice them and think you know, uh, you know, it's, it, it looks slightly unprofessional for, for for certain people. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I think it's a great point what you mentioned there, and it's really, I don't know if you know, and I'm, I'm exactly the same. It doesn't matter who you are, you look at yourself, you think, oh, I look, I look smart, I've got glasses, my hair's look good. But I think everybody actually looks at the background, right? So in advertising, it's quite important if you've got something to do with your business or you've got something that you can put there, but I think everybody will look at, the, look at your background, and, and, and they do, and they always, they always comment, oh, what's this, what's that, and stuff like that. I've actually not done anything in mind, but it, it, it's a chance, it's a chance to do something, I think, and to bear that in mind. Like you say, you're not in your bed or, or wherever you are, and it's quite easy to make even just tidy, tidy something up. I think. Yeah, that's a brilliant point, actually, and that's that's one that I hadn't included in the presentation. Um, you're absolutely spot on, though. Just be very aware that your uh, your background is Zoom friendly, so to speak. Mm. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so the last one on this um, point that I just wanted, last point I just wanted to make on this one is I think it's really important, <clears throat> excuse me, that when you're working at home, um, as I mentioned, there is a possibility of just falling into the trap of being at your desk um, and, and not leaving your desk for hours on end. Um, one of the other things I would always recommend that you do is to pace your day with a, a, a mix of um, deep focus work uh, and then periods where you spend time on the sort of routine mundane activities um, and also that you factor in opportunities to communicate with other people as well because it can be particularly if you're if you're living on your own and working at home um, it can be quite isolating um, and even doing your know, zoom chats or a phone call with a colleague um, it's you know it's, it's really nice to maintain that human contact as well um, what I would also suggest in terms of the the routines is that you take into account your own peaks and troughs in terms of time attention and energy um, so for example you might be working around children so realistically there might be spells in the day where you're, you're not going to be able to give your work your full attention so you might do the more routine um, tasks around those times um, you know, also if you're working around a partner as well so if your partner's working at home and you're maybe um, sharing childcare responsibilities um, and also just consider your own um, body clock so you, you know you if you're a real early riser and you know that you you know you're up early and you're most effective first thing in the morning then if you can really tune into that and and leverage it um, then realistically, you can really give yourself the best chance of um, working effectively and productively. And you can flex your schedule to suit that. Um, and again, this is an opportunity to maybe experiment a wee bit. Um, you'll maybe try the earlier starts if you're a morning person. Um, if you know that you're a bit of a night owl, then there might be work activities that you can save to do in the evening. Um, it's really just about personalising it and finding you know, what works for you. Um, but as I say, just try to, to mix up your day with a, a, a blend of the deep focus work, the routine activities, and also that human connection, uh, connecting with clients, colleagues, um, or, uh, or staff. Um, for a wee bit more, in terms of the, when I mentioned about the body clock and just tuning into your own circadian rhythms. Um, there's a great book called Routine Equals Results. Um, that's by a gentleman called Rob Moore. Um, it's, it's a very short book. I think it's about 130 pages or thereabouts. Um, but he really goes into a lot of detail about uh, identifying those peaks and troughs in, in energy and then um, setting your your own um, schedule to to align with that so that you're you're really tuning into it and, and making the most of those productive periods in the day so in terms of time 
as I say, it can quite often uh, be the case that when you're working at home, the time can just disappear. Uh, you can get to the end of the day and think, I don't know where, I don't know where the time's gone. I don't know um, where the hours have disappeared to. Um, and if this is something that you actually would like to um, explore in a bit more detail, there's a couple of um, resources that I thought I would point out to you. Um, so with the iPhone, and th there is a way of doing this on Android as well, I'm sure, but I've just given an iPhone example because that's what I have. Um, so if you want to manage your time, I, I think it's really important that if you want to manage your time, you really have to be able to see it. So that's in terms of your calendar and the way that you um, schedule your activities, but also to have a real understanding of where your time is going and what you're spending your time on at the moment. Um, particularly if you are wanting to um, enhance your time management and really uh, work effectively. So if you want to really look at where your time is going, um, on the iPhone you can go into your settings, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and you go into screen time and you can look at all your activity. And what that will do is that will show you um, by day, by week, by month, um, it will show you exactly how much time you're spending on different apps and different categories of apps. Um, you can actually set limits for different categories that you want to manage. Um, and what that does is once you've set your limit, then a notification will appear when you've got five minutes left. So say, for example, if you wanted to set a limit of 30 minutes a day on social media, um, you can set that up in your settings and it will then give you a notification to say once you've reached the 25 minute point. You can also enable it across devices. So if you, for example, I'm a, a Mac user and I've got an iPhone, so I can have that set up that it will take the combined total of how much time I'm spending on um, social media, for example. Um, and I can set a limit on that. Um, it's really, it's a really good tool to use if you want to keep track on um, things like social media, you know, things that can end up sucking the time out of your day almost. So your social media usage, um, I don't know about you, but certainly when this all started, I found I was spending an awful lot of time looking at news websites and the BBC News app. Um, I've actually now deleted the app because I think if I just watch the headlines at night, that's, that's as much news as I want. Um, each day. Um, but as I say, it's a, good, it's a good way of getting a handle on how much time you're actually spending on different activities. Um, there's also a website called Rescue Time. Um, so that's rescuetime.com. And that will automatically, if you install that um, on your desktop, um, that will automatically work away in the background and it will track um, your time in terms of websites and apps. Um, what it can also do is you can actually also set it to turn off social media or news um, at particular periods in the day. Um, if you really want to delve into it in a wee bit more detail, you can also set up um, uh, productivity goals. You can do productivity training and tools. Um, you can get a score. But it can, it can just be there as a tool to help you establish some better habits. Um, to help you master your schedule and really get a really good handle on where your time is going um, and then take control of that. Um, if, the, if you want to manually keep tabs on how long you're spending on things, um, there's various different tools out there. Uh, one that I've previously used is called Toggle. Um, so that's just toggle.com and that's a free time tracking um, option um, but you'll also possibly find if you use any kind of accounting software there's usually some kind of um, time tracking facility built into that as well so again um, if you want to just track where your time's going that's there as an option too one word of warning on any of those <laughs> is to be careful that you don't end up going down a rabbit hole when it comes to researching productivity hacks and apps. Um, there are countless websites, apps, 
and facilities out there but there's actually the potential to waste an awful lot of time looking at them and researching them and comparing them so uh, as I say it's just a wee word of warning but those are some of the ones that, um, that I would sort of highlight to you. Has anyone used anything like, like those before? Have any of you done any kind of time tracking in the past? Do you think that would be something that would that would be beneficial? Um, I've used a, a time tracker before. Um, I, I tend to use uh, what's known as the tomato timer, which is the Pomodoro technique. Uh, yeah. The app that I use in the computer is uh, tomatotimer.com. So it logs every half an hour interval, uh, and you can actually record what you've been doing in that half an hour on the on a sort of a, a timesheet. Yep. Um, but I've also used uh, more sort of advanced time tracking machine uh, software um, to actually record projects and work. But then that goes back to when I worked in, as an accountant in practice and I used to have to record every six minutes of my working day as to which client was getting charged to it. So right. um, uh, that, that is where it gets to an extreme. Uh, but working from home, it is actually a good discipline to use something like the tomato timer and give yourself... Um, half an hour chunks for a wee <clears> five minute break just to get away from the machine and try and get your 250 steps done every hour or something like that. Brilliant, great. <laughs> Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Right, we'll move on. Uh, so we've, we've mentioned routines. Um, one of the things that I'm I get really excited about, um, and you might have um, heard me mention this before if uh, if you've been at any of the workshops, is um, default diaries. Um, so if you've never come across this before, basically a default diary acts as a plan of what you will ideally do. Um, it really lets you get a handle on how you allocate your time. And investing the time to do this gives you a visual template for your ideal week. Um, it's a very simple but really effective approach to, to proactively focusing on what your priorities are. Um, and that can be at work and at home. So I've done a wee sample one here just to give you a, a flavour of what it is. Um, and on this one here, I've just done some really basic colour coding. Um, again, one word of warning I would say is don't get too carried away with colour coding because then you can tie yourself up in knots if you're trying to remember 11 or 12 different color coding um, options. Um, so in this example, I've marked uh, purple is personal, blue is business, and yellow is appointments. And what you do is if you were sort of starting to build a default diary from scratch, what you would do is you would start by fact um, entering events that occur daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, etc. Program your days into bite-sized chunks and include specific times dedicated to the high-value tasks, the important tasks, and then also your non-urgent tasks. Um, and as much as you know, th things crop up, um, I would never suggest that you would have this absolutely rigidly in place and, and be able to stick to it 100% of the time. But even if you can plan that, plot this out as a, as a map of how you would ideally want your week to look, um, research has shown that even if you can stick to that 80% of the time, you'll be achieving far more than you would have done had you not had it in place. Um, and if managed well, this doing this um, approach can actually let you just ditch the to-do list uh, and, and have a very diary led approach instead um, because it's a lot more um, proactive than reactive. One top tip that I would um, give is to when you when you're starting work each morning rather than opening your emails first I would start with opening your calendar and focusing on what's in the calendar and see because that lets you tune in right away. You're tuning into what are your priorities for the day. Again, it's about being proactive and actually proactively looking at, well, what, what had I determined was important for today? 
rather than opening up your emails and then you're automatically starting your day by reacting to what other people, uh, you know, to what's in your email inbox. And quite often your email inbox is made up of other people's priorities rather than your priorities. So it's just there as a, as a suggestion, again, for something that you might want to try. Um, and what you can actually do is if you use Outlook, um, you can actually change the settings so that when you open Outlook, it opens your calendar rather than your emails. Um, and then, as I say, you can just take a, a, a diary led approach. Um, and if this is something that you'd, you would want a bit of help or advice with, um, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to have a wee chat uh, with anyone. Um, this is something that I've helped clients to do in the past uh, where there was one lady, for example, who I helped. Um, she was working off a to-do list that was four sides of A4 paper. Um, and what we did was we ultimately, we, we managed to, to get her into a default diary uh, routine. Um, she managed to ditch the to-do list. Um, and ultimately what she then managed to do was get her working week down to a three day week um, and then be able to factor in time to spend with her children. And um, she was also actually able to take up a class, uh, a new class uh, that she'd been wanting to do. Um, so I think we're at a stage where we've all got an opportunity to reflect about our schedules and um, step back, as I say, step back from the nine to five and just you know, reassess uh, what our priorities and our schedules uh, should look like. Is that making sense? Yep, okay. So I'm just gonna go through the next few slides fairly swiftly. Uh, the next one is just some really quick wins in terms of interruptions, distractions, and procrastination. Um, so these are just some top tips that, I, that I'd like to run through. Um, so the first one I would really, really recommend that you do is to have a look at your notifications. So that's on your email, your calendar, your apps. Um, and I would do that across your phone, tablet, PC, etc. Um, I've actually got my notifications set up um, in such a way that the only sound notifications I have are if I get a phone call or a text. Um, I don't have any notifications that appear on my screen. You know, I've got nothing that swishes onto the screen, pops up uh, or slides across onto the screen. Um, so my notifications are just the, on my phone, I've just got it that it's the badge icon notifications. I've got no sounds pinging or anything like that. Um, because it can just be so distracting. It can interrupt your train of thought. It can interrupt if you're in a meeting or on a Zoom call. Um, and it just can be so, so distracting. And, and then it can take you quite a while to, to refocus on, on what it was you were doing. So again, just take the time to, you know, to play around a wee bit with it. You, you can switch them off, you can adjust them and just personalize it for, for what, what you feel comfortable with and what you think would help uh, for, for yourself. Um, I would close unnecessary tabs. So on your, um, uh, your computer, for example, if you've got a lot of tabs open, it's almost like um, having a lot of open folders lying around on your desk when you're actually only trying to focus on one thing. So again, that can be quite distracting, particularly if any of those tabs have notifications associated with them as well. Um, so for example, if you've got your email tab open, but you're actually working on a Word document and you don't need your emails to be open, it can be very distracting if you start seeing the email notification number going up that you've got you know, emails coming into your inbox, et cetera. Um, so again, it's just about really narrowing your focus to, to what it is that you're currently uh, working on. So I would close unnecessary tabs. As much as possible, if you can isolate yourself, if you're doing really deep focus work, um, I, I know that can maybe be a wee bit tricky at the moment with uh, this, the, the current circumstances, but where it is work that you really have to give your full attention to, if it's possible, I would just try to isolate yourself if you're doing that. You, cannot, you might want to consider setting up some kind of wee traffic light uh, uh, system. Um, so you might want to have even, maybe even just a do not disturb sign on your door or you might have an agreement with your partner that you know, if the office door is closed, you don't get interrupted. Um, 
and you might want to put your phone on silent as well. If you're working at home and there's perhaps distractions with your know, children, partner, washing machines, etc., um, you can actually wear noise cancelling headphones. And again, that can be quite helpful if it's something that you really, really need to give your full attention to. Um, starting with a wee micro goal. So this is in terms of procrastination. If you, can, if you sometimes find it quite difficult to get started on something and you find yourself doing anything and everything but getting actually started, what I would recommend is just what is the smallest possible thing that you could do um, in terms of, of kicking off that, that bit of work. Um, so just start with a micro goal. It develops a, a sense of urgency and just give yourself a, a bite-sized chunk to work on. And then Eat the Frog. Um, so Eat the Frog is a book by a product of productivity expert called Brian Tracy. Um, if you've not read it, I would definitely recommend having a wee look. Um, but Eat the Frog, basically what that means is that you, get, you, you identify what is your biggest, ugliest task of the day and you do that first. So that is your main focus. As soon as, you, as, soon as you're sitting down to do your work, just eat the frog. Um, and the, the thinking behind it is if you can get your biggest, chunkiest bit of work out of the way first, then that will give you momentum to really kind of work productively um, for the rest of that day. Because if you can do your big chunky bit of work first, then anything else is, is going to feel easier uh, to do. Um, and one of my favorite phrases from the book, um, particularly, you know, particularly when it comes to procrastination, um, is if you have to eat a live frog, it doesn't pay to look at it for very long. So that's a, that's a great rephrase that I remind myself of. You know, if I'm sort of perhaps delaying getting started on something, I just think this isn't going to get any better the longer I look at it. So as I say, just eat the frog. It's a great wee metaphor. Uh, metaphor sorry. Um, and I would definitely recommend the book if you've not already read it. So everyone okay so far? We'll just carry on. Yep. Okay. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly run through some tools and resources that I thought might be helpful for you. Um, so we can just go through these pretty quickly. Uh, firstly, virtual meetings and collaboration. Um, so we are now all, I think Zoom has become our best friend over the last few weeks. Um, so you're, you're probably familiar with Zoom. Um, so uh, we've got Zoom. Uh, there's, there's various, various other ones, obviously, but Zoom, FaceTime, uh, there's Microsoft Teams, um, but these are brilliant for virtually meeting with people, collaborating with people um, in terms of your network and colleagues. Um, you can meet new connections as well. Um, and it's also super um, for just meeting up with family and friends. Um, I've heard of people doing quiz nights, um, pub quizzes, bingo nights, virtual karaoke. Um, and it's a lovely opportunity to just regularly have that face-to-face, -face, um, virtual face-to-face -face contact with people um, and just and staying in touch. If you want to share content with your, your followers, perhaps on social media, etc., um, there's, again, countless options to choose from. But some of the ones that I thought I would highlight are uh, Facebook Live, YouTube, um, and I'm not sure um, if any of you have used LinkedIn for this, but LinkedIn now offers um, live video broadcasting. Um, so what that does is that allows you to share videos in real time. Um, it's currently being piloted. And what you have to do is you have to actually apply to request access to it. Um, but if, if you think that's something that would be helpful for you, then what you can do is you can go onto LinkedIn and there's just a, a very brief application form that you fill out. Um, but if you want to be maybe a wee bit ahead of the curve, then that's something that you might want to explore. Um, and again, any of these uh, facilities can be really helpful to um, share relevant, helpful content with your audience. Um, particularly if you normally work face-to-face -face with clients or um, customers, then this is maybe a way of staying engaged with them um, when you're not actually physically able to, to go and meet them. 
for um, WhatsApp, there's a couple of options here. Um, so you're, you're quite possibly familiar with WhatsApp for um, group messages, one-to-one -one messages, and um, video messages, voice messages. Um, there is also the WhatsApp business app. Um, so I'm not sure if you've come across that one before. Um, on WhatsApp business, what you can do is you can actually create a, a small catalog for your business. Um, you can use it to connect with customers um, and you can actually set up automated messaging on it as well. So what you can do is you can set up automatic replies to perhaps your know, perhaps common inquiries that you get. Um, one of the main benefits of WhatsApp business is that it allows you to have both your business and your personal WhatsApp on the same device. Um, so if WhatsApp is something that you would naturally use when you're, you're um, communicating with clients, then again, it might just be something that you would want to explore in a wee bit more depth to see if that's something that would, uh, would be suitable for you. So audio tools and resources. Um, I'm a big fan of Siri. Um, there's also Alexa and I'm, I'm sure there's other options out there as well. Um, but these are so handy for just quickly adding tasks, uh, reminders. Um, you can set timers. So uh, as, as previously mentioned, um, if you want to set a timer for a specific period of time, if you want to do a wee bit of deep focus work, um, you can just tell Siri to set a timer for you. Um, there's also um, voice notes. Again, if that's something that you've not previously used, that's a brilliant way of um, touching base with clients and colleagues and also staff as well. Um, it's a wee bit uh, less formal and more personal than other approaches. Um, and it's a very convenient alternative to email because you can do it from anywhere. You can do it when you're on the move. Um, you don't have to be stuck at your desk. And it's perfect for just short, you know, fairly short recorded audio messages. Um, but again, it's just a nice, a slightly more personal approach if you're wanting to, wanting to touch base with someone. Dictation. Um, again, uh, this is a massive time saver, something I'm a huge, a huge fan of. Um, I find this particularly handy for um, brain dumps, uh, text messages, if you're doing a list, if you're doing uh, notes, or even if you want to perhaps draft some piece of content or an email, what you can do is I've actually the, just the wee microphone icon that you can see there. Um, if you've not previously used it, then it's, it's usually just situated next to the space bar on, you, on your um, keypad on your phone. And what you can do is you can just dictate whatever it is that you, that you want, and it will automatically convert that into text. Hi, Damon. Hi, could I just uh, jump in there as well? Uh, Paul, do you um, have knowledge we came across something? Have, have you guys ever come across uh, Otter? AI, I think it is. And yeah, it was also AI. Yes. It was an amazing bit of software that uh, you, think you, you can have a video like this, can't you? And it gets transcribed if you upload it. Is that right? Uh, I, I've not used it, but Mary Ann's used it for doing exactly that. So she can have a session with somebody and then basically transcript it into a, a script effectively Aye. after she's had a, a, a meeting with someone. I'll put a link up in the in the chat to it, but certainly something people should maybe have a we look at. It looks like an amazing resource. If uh, and I think you get six hundred megabytes uh, free per month as well. Yep, that's 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 correct. Um, and it, yeah, because I know that Phil Eldridge mentioned that in a session the other morning. Yes. Um, and I'd I'd heard of it before, but I'd, I'd actually forgotten about it until he mentioned it. Um, so I had a look at the website, and it's. Uh, again, a, a brilliant um, option for transcribing notes or, as you say, recording conversations, and then it converts it into text for you. Um, so again, a massive time saver. Um, and quite often, um, 
I'll quite often hear people say that, that they're very good at thinking through a process or an idea or a message or, or something that they want to communicate. But when it comes to actually putting it down in black and white, they get the sort of blank sheet syndrome. You know, they're just faced with a blank sheet and they don't know what, where to start. So transcribing things can be a really good way of just getting the thoughts out of your head onto, onto, um, onto the screen. Um, and then it gives you something to work with that you can then obviously, you know, tweak, refine, expand on, um, or, or, um, or edit. Um, and you can share it, um, I think with Otter, for example, any content that it transcribes then becomes searchable. You can put tags on it. And it's, it's a really sophisticated um, resource, as far as I can tell. Has, has anyone had any experience of using it? Just came across it this week, like 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 yeah, it was built through Phil actually. And just yep. one I hadn't heard of, but sounded like a uh, for for certain people, sounded like a great time saver and uh, maybe something that would add to uh, your uh, capabilities, I guess. Yeah, definitely, it's definitely a good one to have in the having the toolkit, so to speak. Uh, and then lastly, in terms of audio content and tools, um, if if you've not previously uh, dipped into podcasts then I would recommend um, checking them out. It's, it's a great way of staying up to date with industry news. Um, they can be a really good resource for if you're looking for professional tips around a particular topic um, and, and it's free. Um, so you know, most, as far as I know, most podcasts are free to listen to. Um, and it's, it can sometimes make a nice change from either reading about a topic or, or watching it on YouTube. Um, particularly, as I say, if you're, you know, if you're in the garden or you're out for a walk, you know, you can tune into a podcast and, and it's a nice way of absorbing a wee bit of content in a, in a different format if you've not previously done it. A wee question from Colleen, Kate. Sure. Uh, it was just really a quick comment about the uh, dictation, just as a really good tip for me. Um, it's something... Oh. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's something that I probably will now use uh, after today's discussion and one a couple of weeks ago for going round properties. Yeah. Um, it's something, it's that old style that we then went away from and we, we used to, we would now write things out and do measurements. Um, but it's something I would quite like to go back to be a lot quicker. And you probably think of things, uh, you, you talk through a property better than maybe what you're writing it at the time. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. I think, uh, yeah, I think that would be a brilliant thing mm -hmm. for you to, to utilise. Um, because as you say, when, when you're actually physically in the property, you, you can could describe be describing what you could see. And mm -hmm. you could also maybe highlight in your, uh, you know, in, your audio, in your dictation, you could highlight things that you want to specifically point out to viewers mm -hmm. um, yeah. that you maybe That's wouldn't necessarily remember when you got back to the office if you had to sit and start writing it down. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a great tip for me, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I actually once um, experimented with it just from a time-saving point of view. I just, I, I literally just took a paragraph from a book and I, I texted it and I timed myself doing that and then I timed myself dictating it and it was literally 50% quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, it can be a real, a real time-saver. Um, it can take a wee bit of getting used to and playing around with. And I would always recommend do check over what it has transcribed just from a, a grammar and punctuation point of view and spelling because mm -hmm. um, it, it can take a while for it to get used to your voice, mm -hmm. um, but definitely oh, worth a try. I'll be trying it around the house tonight, I think. <laughs> yeah, and you can use it, I mean, as I say, you can use it for things like text messages, emails, mm -hmm. you can use it for anything. That's it. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so just the last couple of wee points and then we can open up for some questions. Um, so the Eisenhower matrix, again, if you um, find yourself perhaps procrastinating or if you find it difficult to prioritise your tasks, particularly if you're feeling a wee bit overwhelmed, you've maybe got a lot of tasks that you want to get through and you're, um, you need a quick way of identifying what the priorities are. This is a very, very simple wee tool that you can do. You can literally just do it on the, you know, a bit of paper, split it into four quadrants, and then start 
organizing your tasks into to each of the, the areas. Um, so this is a tool that you would use for decision making and prioritizing. And it's about putting tasks in order and context uh, to free up your mind. Um, so it's not about collecting lots of tasks, it's about sorting them and then, and then getting them uh, tackled. So you can see there um, the four quadrants, the do, do first would tend to be things that are either a, a, a crisis, um, a really pressing problem, or something that's deadline driven. Do later, uh, so that's things that are not urgent, but important. And those are likely to be sort of key result areas. They tend to be tasks that are uh, around prevention, planning, um, relationship building, and uh, you have to be quite proactive about forward planning these tasks into your work. Apparently, this quadrant, the blue one, that's the area that actually is quite often the most ignored, but is usually the one that will actually get you the, the, the results, um, because the tasks that would naturally sit in that one um, will quite often contribute to business development and relationships, but they do require initiative and a very proactive approach. Um, and this can be very fluid. So for example, something that would sit in the blue quadrant for quite some length of time might come to a stage where it shifts into the, the green one. Um, so a perfect example of that would be a tax return. So for a lot of the, a lot of the year, your tax return would sit in blue because it is important, but for a lot of the year, it's not urgent. But obviously, as the deadline approaches, that will shift over into the, the green. Um, also, things like uh, business plans, you know, revising your business plan or writing a business plan. That's, again, the kind of thing that would quite possibly sit as being important, but not urgent. Um, and that could sit there for months. But if you do put it there as something that you need to do, um, you will find that, as I say, the, the, the sort of tasks that sit in that blue quadrant will quite often be the ones that can actually really contribute to your, your business development. Um, and then just lastly, the, the bottom two, you've got delegate. So that's tasks that they don't, um, they don't necessarily contribute to your overall goals, um, but they do require uh, immediate attention or you, or you might feel that they require your attention. So, a lot of the type of uh, the type of things that might sit in there would be things like um, some phone calls, some emails, uh, meetings, perhaps. Um, and a lot of the things that sit in that quadrant can either be done very quickly and simply, or they can be delegated perhaps to someone else. Eliminate. Um, so these are tasks that aren't urgent. They're not important. Um, and tend to be quite trivial. Uh, so for example, it might be things like surfing the web, social media, um, perhaps some phone calls and emails. Um, but a lot of the things that would sit in that quadrant are things that can either be done in, in sort of background mode or they can just simply be discarded altogether. Um, but as I say, this is just a very, very simple tool that can be quite effective if you've got a lot on your to-do list and you don't know what to prioritize. If you start actually physically just plotting the tasks into these four quadrants, then the priorities will, will naturally emerge as part of that process. Is that something that anyone's used before? <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, Paul. I, I, I've used I've used that that exact matrix before because the Stephen Covey in his book The Seven Habits Highly Effective People talks about the, <laughs> those uh, quadrants and he calls the quadrant two the blue one um, in terms of being the the sort of high hitting activities that people put off but the the the, the sort of planning um, and development type activities they're not urgent you can put them off to tomorrow but if you get them done you're going to be in a better position to deal with all the other things and the different the other different quadrants so yeah I've, I've come across that a few times that 
um, set up of how to allocate your tasks between those different sort of uh, buckets, if you like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A nice, a nice way of doing it, actually. I mean, obviously, you can do it on, um, you know, just on a sheet of paper. Um, but another quite, I'm quite a visual person, um, and one approach that I find works quite well is just to do, to do this um, tool, but just do it with post-it notes, because then you can actually start physically moving things. And if one quadrant is looking a wee bit too full, it's easy to just move a post-it note and say, well, actually, that could that could slide down into the bottom, uh, you know, bottom left or or whatever. Um, and again. Uh, from a sort of task completion point of view, I quite like if I've got the quadrant set up as post-it notes, it's quite nice once you've done a task to be able to take the post-it note off and just scrunch it up and put it in the bin. Because uh, you know, because then that task's uh, done and dusted. Um, so just lastly, the, um, Paul's already mentioned the, the Pomodoro technique. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, so this is a deceptively simple time management technique. Um, so one Pomodoro is basically a 25 minute block of time. And what you do is you choose a task that deserves your, your full undivided attention. And you set a timer for 25 minutes, ideally without any interruptions. So I would recommend having your phone off, your emails switched off and closing your office door if, if, if it's possible to do that. Um, you isolate and immerse yourself in that task for that 25 minute spell. Then when the timer goes off, you set another timer for five minutes and you take that five, minute as a, five minutes as a break. Um, so you might want to get away from your desk for a few minutes, make a cup of tea. Um, or even just you'll know, take that wee five minutes to just switch to a different task. Um, and then as soon as the five minute uh, timer has gone off, you do another 25 minute block. And it's just repeating that process until you've done four lots of 25 minutes or until you've completed the task, whichever comes first. Um, but this is a really good wee tool because it develops a sense of um, urgency and momentum. Um, it means that you're working in bite-sized chunks. So even if it's a task that you really don't like, that you don't enjoy, or that you find difficult, personally, I just think, even if it's something I really don't like, I can do it for 25 minutes, and then I get a wee break, and then I can do another 25 minutes. And actually, the more that you progress through that task and that bit of work, um, the, the easier it gets. Um, we actually had one of the, the workshops that I did at the chamber last year. Um, one of the ladies that attended it, um, she tried this technique the next day. She had a big proposal that she had to put together for a client. Um, and she had previously thought that that proposal would take her probably the best part of two days to complete. And what she did was she applied the Pomodoro technique and she did the proposal and she said she actually got the proposal done in two hours and then was able to go out and spend the afternoon in the garden because she felt that she'd uh, you know she'd earned the afternoon off um, because she just knuckled down and she did the 25 minute chunks um, and managed to to get through that big chunky bit of work um, so definitely something to to give a to try if you've not previously um, if you've not previously used it. Um, so that's the last of the, the slides. I just wanted to mention, uh, Damon's already uh, touched on the, the session next week. Um, so with the Pomodoro technique, I thought it might be nice to try that um, in a group. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to host a virtual co-working productivity session. Um, so that's on Wednesday at 10 a.m. And what we'll do is we will, um, for anyone that wants to join me, uh, we'll work virtually um, on our own tasks. So we'll get together on Zoom. We'll set the time, you know, we'll have introductions, set the timer. Uh, we'll do the 25 minute chunks, five minute breaks. And I just thought it would be a really nice chance to um, practice the technique, focus on your own work, but also have a wee bit of support and accountability 
um, but simply get things done at the same time. Um, and there'll be a wee chance for some informal networking in between the, the 25 minute chunks as well. Um, so there's some uh, spaces still available for that session um, and that's just on Eventbrite. If you look at the, the Chamber website or on Eventbrite, you'll, you'll get the link there to register. Um, if that session um, doesn't suit you or um, you would want to maybe try a different format, um, there is also a website called focusnate.com. Um, and what they will do is if you register with them, they will basically pair you up with a, an online buddy. And what you can do is you can work quietly in tandem on a, you know, on a virtual basis with that uh, buddy. And it's 50 minute sessions, um, but you have a, a, an accountability partner to, to work with. Um, so again, just something that you might want to explore if you think that that would be helpful for you as well. So thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope that you found that helpful. Um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you'd be very welcome to do so. Um, and I've also got a Facebook page um, if you want uh, regular tips on productivity, working from home and time management. Um, but I'm just going to hand back over to Damon now uh, and also open it up for questions. Okay. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, uh, no, that's uh, absolutely excellent. Thank you very much for, You're welcome. for that. Uh, I'll probably try and nobble you as well because one of the next phases, maybe with the Together for Business Hub, would be maybe to have some, uh, you know, productivity section uh, or a working from home section that we can uh, add this video to, and maybe some of your slides uh, or all of your slides. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 and some of the resources to to help people as well. So there's a, a bit of we're building that online resource. But um, sure. yeah, um, if I can, uh, I, I see that uh, we, we've got a few hands up here at the moment. So um, okay. we'll see, uh, uh, Robert, if we can uh, go to you. You've got your your hand up for a question. Yes, thanks very much, Damon. That was excellent. Thoroughly enjoyed that. As you know, I don't ever usually work from home. I find it very difficult, but a lot of the things are, uh, I've got a lot of good ideas. So thank you very much, Kate, for your, your very informative presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope that was, uh, I'm glad it was helpful for you. Very much so. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, it's good, good to hear people, uh, you know, getting, getting the benefits of the, uh, these, these sessions. Uh, so, uh, yeah, is, is there a, a very comprehensive, actually. So has, has anyone else got any, any questions that they, they'd like to ask before we round up? Just uh, stick your hand up in the meet, in, in the uh, chat uh, and participants function, or, or, or physically, if uh, uh, anyone can. Oh. Has, has anyone else got any? Um, if you don't have any questions, does anyone else have any tips or tools or anything that they've come across when working from home that they would maybe want to to recommend to the group? Paul, you must have. Put, put pulls of, uh, uh, into all these things? Uh, I think you've covered a, a lot of the things that I would have mentioned in terms of environment, breaks, setting, distractions. Basically, yeah, I mean, it's, you've, you've covered the topic very comprehensively. Uh, I think maybe uh, the one missing, I think you mentioned, touched on it, but the uh, you, you guys use internally. So I think Zoom works really well for the you know, sort of clients and stuff, but internally you guys use the Microsoft 365 and Teams quite a lot, don't you, Paul, which uh, I, I know we touched on there. Yeah, we, we use that across, uh, across the team, obviously. Um, I mean, we've got, Mary and I obviously work in the same house because we're husband and wife, but our team are obviously uh, working from home now, so we share a lot of stuff using MS Teams, which means that we've got a portal where we can upload documents and have them all uh, saved in a central place. Um, and we also use the sort of general Office 365 suites or SharePoint and things like that. That means that we can access files um, remotely, but efficiently across across the whole team. Um, that that's very helpful rather than having things stored on your hard drive or or having to uh, get a, a, a virtual a VPN sort of system that, you know, we don't have a, a central server that that we store everything all, it's all held in the cloud. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's a handy thing if you've got many people that are working from home across a team, if you save things to the cloud, plus we use finance systems that are cloud-based like zero so that anyone can access the, the finance system remotely. 
uh, as long as they've got the access codes and stuff. So that's that's quite useful. Uh, so, so there's a lot of stuff out there that can uh, you know benefit people uh, in, in in terms of the the collaborative working side of things, and uh, I think. Uh, of, uh, Microsoft have uh, uh, opened up the some of the licenses for free um, for uh, um, so certainly for the next six three six months I think at the, at yeah. the moment so uh, there's there's an opportunity for for people to get in on that. One of the other tools that we use is uh, Trello, which is not an MS uh, Office three six five product, but it's it's a, a useful uh, tool in terms of just managing workflow in terms of uh, the sort of Kanban system that it uses in terms of just lists. So it's a, it's a good online tool and it's free. Uh, and we use that one as well, uh, which is quite handy for accessing things remotely. And have you found that that's been um, even more useful since you're not all physically working in the same place? Uh, I think it's it's always been useful. I think what it allowed us to do was adapt very quickly to the lockdown. It was a case of we we're working in the office right up until the Monday night and then when it was locked down it was right okay pick up your PCs and your monitor and head off home and set up tomorrow and we're back up and running the next day basically because we we know that we, we've got that facility to be able to move remotely quite quickly so we're now you know easy it didn't take us any time at all to suddenly just change setting because we're, we're working on that basis pretty much all the time because uh, I suppose previously when Mary and I set up the business, we were working from home all the time. Um, so it was very much, uh, it's allowed us to adapt very quickly because we've got all these things already in place to be able to work remotely. And I think also, uh, just, just, just as a, a sort of uh, observation as well, you, uh, I used to have an office next door to these guys, but I thought they were the same person because you'd never seen one of them in the office at the same time. Uh, time as the others sort of thing uh, so they were always over in you know properties around Scotland or whatever and and quite often you'd see one out of the five of them in the office so I think uh, they were already operating like that to to keep that communication going but I think for busy offices it's actually the these sort of tools will change the people that it put, puts it put it put them on the agenda more and I think it will change the way people work going forward in terms of actually do you know what there's loads of bits of information that we don't communicate and miss out on um previously but now we've got used to using what we've been forced to to use um and i think it will uh, really change the way things work and uh, I, I think um philip had touched on something there why now now that be, now it's become more of the norm why would you come up from London, two of you, uh, to go and view a factory in, in uh, Clyde Bank when you can, you know, do it pretty much the same thing, uh, you know, virtually? Um, and, and I think a lot of businesses will start to recognise the the time and costs that they can uh, sort of save on uh, as, as they go forward. Um, but uh, I always do say, though, you know, from a local perspective, we, 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 we're all looking forward to actually seeing someone in the flesh as well. Uh, you know, as, as, you know that's, that's, that's how we come together locally. So, um, There's a message, uh, question from David. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a great, great presentation, Kate. It was excellent. And there's a lot of tools and things that people can be doing there, which I think, we think is brilliant. But like I said, I hope we don't all forget it, you know, after this and go back to, I mean, one thing that's not probably really been mentioned is the environment. I mean, I'm not a massive environmentalist, but it's supposed to be saving the environment a lot from everywhere. I, I particularly had a client in East Kilbride, which we're doing a couple of websites for them. And I've visited them for the last six months every week. And now the last month I've not been in that and we've been doing Zoom calls. And I'm thinking, well, not only, not only time in the environment, but it's like Damon just touched on there. It's, it's two or three hours out of your day as opposed to an half an hour meeting. So as small businesses, it just enables you to make a lot, work a lot more efficiently. Yep, absolutely. I know I've, I've not filled my car for over a month now. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm aware that we're uh, sort of uh, uh, just into... One, one oh, more right. uh, uh, question from Robert. Yeah, can, can I just say, guys, that about the environmental situation, 
Uh, I stay, I stay in Lindsay, and from going down to my yards, I have to do occasionally. It's amazing how much clearer the Campsie Hills even look, as you know where we are is on a flight path into Glasgow Airport. And whilst I would never stop anybody going on a flight, but it's much, much clearer. And if you look over, I can see over. I was in I to go into um, Bishop Briggs the other day, and I can look over, and even looking over, I can see over into the you know the hills further beyond the campuses. It's definitely saving the environment. So uh, we must be doing something right. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. So, uh, uh, as I said, it's uh, give, given that a lot of this is about time management, uh, uh, we shouldn't want to, to run over too much. And, you know, obviously we'll be continuing these conversations at uh, other events, drop-in uh, sessions. And uh, uh, if you would like to join uh, the uh, co-working session to find out a bit more about the Pomodoro, uh, Pomodoro technique and uh, have a bit of hand-holding, I guess, would be quite useful. Um, on that front, uh, it's for really limited, uh, so please do book uh, if you want to take part. And if you do book and can't make it, please free up your, your space because, uh, like I said, there will probably be other people that want to to book on that one because I think we've got a maximum of about eight or, 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 or so for, for that. Otherwise, it gets a bit cumbersome. So if, if I could maybe round up just to say, look, thanks very much, guys, for connecting. Uh, it's really important. I've mentioned all the other ways we can stay connected and, and use the Together for Business this um, campaign to, uh, I think, sort of make, make things uh, better and build our community uh, and bring it together. And, and I hope things don't change because I think this is bringing a lot of our businesses and uh, uh, to, together. Uh, and I think that will be um, something that's part of the legacy of this. So please look out for everything that's, that's, that's coming up. Um, and uh, finally, just to, to uh, thank Kate uh, for, for a fantastic presentation there that I think is ho hopefully will add value to your, yourselves personally and to your, your businesses. So thanks very much. Um, You're welcome. Thank you one, for having me. One, one final thing we'd like to do, if we can get the shared screen off, if that's possible, Kate. Um, sure. uh, we will... Uh, try and do a quick uh, we always like to take a quick picture of our sessions uh, so with uh, everyone uh, sort of looking uh, bright and uh, breezy sort of thing if we could do a thumbs up at the end we call it a, a ch say cheese moment so if we could do a quick thumbs up now um, and, there we go. Okay. brilliant okay. fantastic <laughs> Th thank, thank you all for, 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 for coming uh, and uh, uh, we'll hopefully see you again Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye folks. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Bye.